right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of YouTube. This is Pastor Dow. And you know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and come on here and speak about a few things that is going on in our world, our time, and our society. Um, and I'm just going to be brutally honest on all points. Points that most of you probably would neglect, you know, put your fingers in your ears or either turn the dial. You don't even want to hear. You, you really truly don't want to hear. While I do know the racial disparity that is taking place here in the United States of America, and while I myself still to this day experience it, you know, I experience racism and discrimination on an unprecedented scale. Yes, I do. Uh, uh, I do not expect for whites to be able to look into my plight and to be able to comprehend and understand because these people are coming from a privilege and a power standpoint. And it's hard for them to be able to uh, look, you know, uh, in, into my side of the story of things being a black man in America. However, there was some time ago that a study was conducted that a white man decided that he was going to, I don't know how he did it, but he, he um, colored himself black, put himself with black features, and he just simply could not take the psychological effect and the psychological uh, impact that it had upon his mind uh, because it was just about driving him crazy. Now, this is uh, unseen hands and unseen forces that my people in this country deal with all the time. And then people try to tell me that racism does not exist. It's amazing. All right. On the flip side, well, there's organizations out there called Black Lives Matter. All right. And of course, I, I simply cannot be a part of this organization, nor can I get with this organization. I'll tell you the reason why I can't get with this organization, because these so-called community activists um, and, and all these other um, so-called, what, what, what was Obama, community something anyway. But you're not going to tell me that black people as a whole believe that black lives matter when I grew up in Nashville, Tennessee, and as a little boy, all I heard was gunshots, black folks killing black folks. Literally, on a weekly basis, somebody died on my street almost every single week. Almost every week. Um, and there's this place down here in, in Nashville called Dodge City, just on the outskirts. I mean, it's just, there's a reason why it's called Dodge City. But it's just a sad situation. And then, you look at Chicago, Illinois, man, okay, if, if black lives matter so much, then why in the hell are you black folks still killing each other then? Why are you still murdering each other? Well, the religious people on this side would turn around and say, well, mm, uh, Pastor, mm, uh, you're a coon, you're a coon, you're a sellout, you're Uncle Tom, you all this. Of course, the majority of people that say that, they won't come in my face and say that, but you know, they do have a right to freedom of speech. Um, but it's a sad thing, isn't it? And isn't, isn't it a sad that the social engineering has done so polluted our minds that, that even when we're staring truth right in the face, and I'm not expecting for you to ever get any type of truth from any type of court system that offers you plea bargains. You understand what I mean? When you have, I know for sure in this system right here that black children and black teenagers and young black adults are forced to confess to crimes that they didn't commit in order to take a lesser sentence so they can get out or, or, or not be uh, coerced and, and uh, intimidated uh, with jail time. That, that's, that's, that's this system they call justice here in America. Um, and, and you tell me, anyway, I, let me try to stay the course. But I know I run the risk at being called all kind of names by black folks in this society, but it's mostly the ignorant, dumb, stupid black folks in this society. Sure, there are a very small, few number of people out there that are trying to do their best to try to reach the black people in society. They understand what it means. They comprehend what it means to be robbed of a knowledge of self, to not have benefits and privileges, um, to always be um, the ass and not... Uh, the head, they under, you see a lot of people don't understand that, that um, you know, this, this is all we see. 
somebody that is not born in this country that can come from the outside of this country and receive all types of benefits, all types of uh, government help and program and everything else to start a business. Uh, but my people, mm, and then every once in a while, they'll throw you an Oprah Winfrey. Um, now, I don't know Oprah Winfrey personally. I think I've seen her once or twice um, because her her dad, Vernon Winfrey, um, has always cut my hair from the time I was a little bitty small boy um, growing up in East Nashville. He had a barber shop down there um, up until I, I guess in my early 20s when I would come home on leave in the military um, and we would talk quite a bit. And for those of you to make sure um, that you know that I know uh, Vernon Winfrey, they used to have um, a, a man that was retarded in there, um, a black guy. Uh, we used to call him police. And he also had another man in there called Wolf. Uh, Vernon Winfrey was a, a very kind-hearted man. Um, I don't know if he's still alive or not, but he's a very kind-hearted man that um, that actually extended love to people who had special needs and special interests. Um, never bother anybody. And even though he had his barbershop there in East Nashville, even though Oprah Winfrey had made it big, I mean really big in this world right here, a billionaire of a billionaire and stuff, and she bought him a nice home way out in Brentwood, uh, nice cars and stuff. Do you know that that man was still come back to East Nashville? We call it the hood. Because, uh, you know, Center Court is not too far from there. Uh, and J.C. Napier Court is not too far. J.C. Napier, which is Center Court. Um, man, I keep getting this mixed up because I've been so, I don't know, I could be right. It's been so long since I've been there. You know, when you get older and you move away from stuff, things start to escape. But, um, you know, even with all the money that he had from Oprah, uh, he was still come to East Nashville to the same old barber shop in the corner market now that he owned, he would still come there and cut hair because that was his passion. He would do it and he would try his best to reach black youth. But we're living in a time right now um, that we're living in an age of rebellion. We're living in a, a time that you know the blacks, they don't have any fathers in the house. They simply just don't know how to act. And then the, the ones that do have fathers in the house, they try to discipline them. They don't want it. They don't want it. Don't be a male or female. The black people want the world. They want debauchery. They want sin. They want hell. They want drugs. They want iniquity. And that's just a fact. That's literally just a damn fact. It's all there is to it. So don't give me this crap, this load of bucket of crap. Talking about Black Lives Matter. When you look at Chicago, Illinois, it, it, every single day, Black folks are shooting and killing black folks on an unprecedented scale. I don't even want to hear that crap. I don't even want to hear crap. And then as soon as, now don't get me wrong, police officers who are professionals are supposed to be held to a higher standard. I'm telling you right now, be it the U.S. or Canada, their policy is shoot to stop, which means shoots to kill. You mean to tell me that these people, now I understand that regular old beat cops, don't have experience in trigger time. They go and hit a few paper targets and stuff like that, and that's all the trigger time that they've got. Um, I had an excessive amount of trigger time when I was in the military. Um, um, I know people who has had an excessive amount of time um, when they were in, in the military. Um, I know that the CIA, the FBI, especially Delta, man, because, and, and the SEALs, you can't, be that good without having an excessive amount of trigger time. And what's ruling these police today is they're in fear of their lives. They're in fear of their lives because they get pumped up with so much fear from the schools that they go to, the academy and whatever continuing education, if you want to call it that, that they receive from their peers. But they're so full of fear that it, they can't even neutralize I want to show you a video of a, a boy in Canada. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not giving these people passes at all. These people are genetically modified. These people, not only does fluoride help enhance all the recreational drugs and all the other pharmaceutical drugs that seems to be challenging the minds of people and making people go stark, raving, bat 
crap mad. Literally, in this country right here, mm -hmm. all that is happening and all that is definitely going on in this country right here. But you can't tell me that these people who are supposed to be professional, that's the reason why they have the uniform, the gun, and the badge on. You can't tell me that these people can't shoot to injure. And for a police officer can't neutralize someone with a knife, then my suggestion is you need to get your ass off that easy-ass job called a police officer then. That's what you need to do because while it may be stressful, it is not a hard job at all, period. It may be stressful at times. The stress, as soon as they get a call from dispatch, that's when the stress starts. But you all need to know here in America that the police are not designed to protect you. You don't believe me? Go ask them. Go ask them. They're professional writers. They're not designed to protect you at all, period. 99.9% um, .9 of the time, they show up. They show up when the bullets stop flying and all the uh, uh, crime has been done. But the, you, you dial 911 and you're in a hostile situation, you're going to die. That's what, uh, period. So you can't, they're not there. You need to know this first and foremost, but you can't tell me that if you're wearing a uniform, that you're not professional enough to know how to conduct yourself, that every time somebody have a pencil or a toy gun or a knife, that the answer is to shoot to stop or to shoot and kill them every single time. And not only just kill them, just continually keep pumping them up and filling them up with all kinds of lead. They bring lead poisoning to a, a, a whole new height. You follow me? It's just a sad situation. So racism, it, 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 it's on the rise big time in this country and stuff. And, and I'm telling you, um, politically, people are going to use this. And you ain't going to get me to believe that Rahm Emanuel was elected by the people of Chicago. Man, he's a good old boy. <laughs> Man, I tell you. Whoo! Mm. I'm gonna play a video. First one in Canada, where this white boy um, goes on a bus. Look like everything is fine. Four white girls or, or four females come in. Well, let me just go ahead and say because most of you out there are so sensitive, you're not used to talking straight like we are here straightway. But a white boy, he goes and he pulls his pants down and holds out a knife, uh, exposing himself. It's called indecent exposure. So they get to the bus. They, the, the bus comes to a stop. You got all these cops is hollering and screaming at him. Stuff. They could have shot him in the leg. I could have shot him in the leg. If I was a police officer, each one of these incidents, if it was warranted for deadly force, I could have shot them from the distance that they are easily in the leg. I would venture to say, even now, that I done lost a little bit of speed and a little bit of accuracy, I could have shot him in the foot. They'd have been injured the rest of their life, but the leg is a big part. But I'm telling you, all of you here in America and Canada, these people, the, the cops are on the same drugs. They're on the same fluoride. They're on the same GMO modified foods as you are. These folks are in fear of their life, and they're going to use it. They got the system to back it up because an assault on the king's officer is an assault on the king. Itself, and you need to understand. Go and understand what that means. We're living in horrific times. That's the reason why I advocate come out of her, my people, because all the blacks in America are not Hebrews. They're not. They're not God's people. You're gonna know people by their fruit, and that's just the truth. But you need to come out. You really need to come out, and you need to know how to navigate. In this world, because we live in a very hostile environment, we have more people incarcerated in the United States of America than all the countries of the world put together. That includes communist China, who outnumber us. And I mean, by all, the ratio is just amazing. You know, it's a sad. But this man, he deserves to be neutralized for exposing himself like that in the public. And then you got this one one boy running down the street in Chicago. It took a whole year to get it out and stuff. And, and of course, what are they doing? 
Do they really care about justice or they care about people rioting? I'm tell I believe in in rioting. I do because you simply are not going to get your voice heard in this country with words. You can't even sit down to type. You can't even get in front of these so-called elected officials, be they black or white. You ain't going to do it. It's amazing how that the voices can be heard when you start burning down the house, when you start tearing up the city, all of a sudden, we want to come to the table and talk. Utterly amazing, 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 amazing. Let me tell you something. You better live every day as if it is your last day. That's what you better do. You better make sure you have a relationship with the Most High God and, you, and, and come out of these institutions that dupe and deceive you called churches. Come out of that mess. You don't need them. You don't need them churches. You know how to, do you know how the Protestant Reformation was born? It was born out of a king that wanted to get divorced from his wife and marry another wife. That's how it was born. And then from there, all these splinter cells that you call Christianity is still nothing but Roman Catholic, whether you like it or not, because in function, when you see it, that's just the way it is. That's how the Protestant Protestant Reformation was born. And then Martin Luther, Martin Luther, who most of you people esteem as a great man. Martin Luther turned around and said, I can't find this scripture where, just go ahead and take Anne Boleyn for another wife. Have Catherine and have Anne Boleyn. But most of you people don't know history. And of course the Lutherans, the Catholics and everybody else is going to do whatever they can to skew and sweep Luther's words under the rug. But the burden of proof is on you if you think I'm so wrong. Anyway, again, you're going to see a man in decent exposure. You're going to see another black man running down. You're going to see a white man in decent exposure, a black man run down the road. And neither one of these warranted the use of deadly force or shoot to stop. This is the reason why the people are outraged. This is the reason why the people are up in arms. These reason why the people are mad as hell because of the disproportionate injustice that is going on in this wicked ass country called the USA under Satan's authority. I think you're finally getting it. Y'all finally waking up to know that this country, God is Satan. Let's look at the videos. Dramatic and graphic video was played today at the trial of a Toronto police officer charged in the death of Sammy Yatim. The 18-year-old was shot and killed on board a streetcar in the summer of 2013 after brandishing a knife. Now, for the first time, we've seen exactly what happened inside that public transit vehicle. Michelle Chung has the details, but a warning, some of the images are disturbing. Even without the audio, the videos shown to the jury today were riveting. It all began about 11.45 p.m. on July 26, 2013, when Sami Yatim boarded this streetcar. That's him in the ball cap, white pants, and knapsack. That was just one of four videos played in court. People got on and off without incident for about 11 minutes. Then, four women who got on together sat down in the back near the 18-year-old. He exposed himself to some of the women and brandished a switchblade. Everyone except the streetcar driver rushed off. No one was hurt. The Crown has told the jury a toxicologist will testify that Yatim had MDMA or ecstasy and marijuana in his system at the time. Constable James Fursillo and his partner were the first to arrive on scene. By this time, Yatim was alone on the streetcar. Forsillo repeatedly ordered him to drop the knife, then fired three shots at Yatim. The Crown says one severed his spine, one fractured his right arm, but it was the third that entered his heart and eventually killed him. But the shooting didn't stop. Forsillo fired six more times after Yatim was down. Five hit their mark. Shortly after that, another officer tasered Yatim. The whole encounter took about 50 seconds. As the videos played for the jury, Forsillo sat glued to the monitor in front of him. The Crown contends it was not reasonable or necessary for him to shoot nine bullets at Yatim. Forsillo had been on the force for three and a half years before the shooting. He's pleaded not guilty to second-degree murder and attempted murder. His lawyer said the shooting was justified because his client was trying to protect the public from a man Forsillo believed was a threat. Michelle Chung, CBC News, Toronto. I'm the leading state sponsor of terrorism.
While at the same time, we know uh, that these things are tracking devices. That's the reason why they made it so that you can't get in there and get the battery out right there because they won't always be able to track you. Remember, Big Brother always want to keep an eye on you. Are you not amazed at how that these cameras are literally everywhere in this world? You think that you're doing something or, or being personal and private and you being recorded. They can even, even when your phone is off, if you've got this thing in your home, they can hear you. They can listen to everything that you're saying. If you're just up texting and stuff, they can see everything that anybody is doing. They're not going to tell you that this is the type of technology that they have. You need to know this in advance so you know how to navigate. In other words, if you have a cell phone, it is a listening device. It is an information gathering device. That's what it is. And on the train, cameras, subway cameras, highway cameras, red lights, cameras, stoplights. I mean, every, cameras, every overpasses. Look at the news. Look at the news. They're giving traffic reports. What are there? Cameras everywhere. And I, 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 I really think that it's necessary. I think that cops should carry cameras on them everywhere. You know the reason why? So they can't get away with all this murder they've been committing for the last umpteen who know how many years. Because the court of public opinion, when they see exactly what's going on, because it's obvious that these cops are going to lie. They're going to lie. They're, they, they're just going to lie. And they're going to lie and get away with it. The judge is a liar. The system is a liar. They're all are liars. And we need a clean sweep. That's what we need. And I keep hearing over and over and over again in this country, revolution. Why is that? You know, when you look at this thing right here called the Constitution of the United States of America, you know what's, you know what's, ama you know what's amazing? This Constitution is there to make sure that this is enforced called the Declaration of Independence. And you know what's sad? Everything that those so-called alleged stealing murderous founding fathers had found in this country far as laws go. Their nightmare is a reality today. It's literally right. We have been hijacked and taken over as a country. Now, if you understand that, comprehend that, know that, you know how to navigate. You know how to navigate. If you don't, you don't know how to navigate and you deserve exactly what you get for ignorance. That's what you do. Yeah, yes, you do too. It's you know it's a sad situation, but both these guys, no doubt, loaded up on something. Neither one of these accounts warranted deadly force. Now somebody's life is snuffed out of them, and they're going off into eternity. Of course, the atheists would say they don't exist no more. We all gonna see, ain't we? One day, but. Trust no one because mm -mm. you're not around enough people to know them well enough to whether you can build trust or not. Everybody's not trustworthy. Pastor, I'm a trustworthy man. Why do you think I, I've got long-standing friendships and relationships? I mean, and I mean solid long-standing friendship relationship, 20 years running. Most of you been living all this time and cannot point to one friend in this world that will stick with you through thick and thin, through the good and the bad. You can't name one. You've been living 40, 50, and 60 years, and you can't even trust them. You got walls built up. You look out of the slanted eye at them and stuff, and, and you really truly can't. Oh, you want to put yourself out, but you can't. You got to rewrite. Oh, you just, it's, isn't, isn't life crazy?